has been a long eight months since the pro motocross season came to a close. But when the gate dropped to the first 250 moto of the year, it wasn't much different than what we saw last year. Jet Lawrence, your defending champion, jetted away for the dominant first moto victory, pointing out why he has the number one plate on his motorcycle. But we're only halfway through a two moto format. It's time to pay out the points and see who will take the momentum from round one. 250 moto two is coming up. We are ready. It's the opening round of the 2022 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing. This is the Honda Fox Raceway National. Jason Weigel will be joined in the booth by a pair of legends, seven-time AMA National Champion Rick Johnson and multi-time Supercross Champion, the King of Supercross, Jeremy McGrath, and a former Motocross Champion in his own right, Jeremy McGrath. We are ready for our 250 Moto2. Let me give you the highlights of our first 250 moto from earlier today. This is a little over an hour ago. Big crash off the start here on moto number one, lap one. That is Jalik Swole who went down and unfortunately he is banged up and would not be able to finish that moto. Now here's the charge up front. Justin Cooper led this one early. Chet Lawrence able to take the measure of him here to move into the number one spot. And Jet was able to get away from there. Bad news for Cameron McAdoo. It must have been an early crash for him. We, only, we didn't see the crash, but we did see him, obviously, worse for wear, headed back to the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki Pits. The other Lawrence, Hunter Lawrence, gets around Justin Cooper to take over the number two position. Cooper started to struggle in the second half of this moto. He has lost a lot of prep time coming back from a foot injury. So here he loses that final podium spot to the ever-determined RJ Hampshire on the number 24. No changes from there. Hunter Lawrence would keep his brother honest in lap times, but the lead hovered around seven seconds all the way to the end, and Chet is able to take that first moto victory. Here's your top 10 results. Rick Johnson and uh, Jeremy McGrath. We got to talk about the Honda boys and who can challenge them in moto two. It will be interesting to see if Hampshire, maybe Shimoda, who can get in there and prevent them from sweeping the day. For more, let's send it down to the racetrack with Jason Thomas. Guys, I'm down here by the starting line and thinking about this series, now, anyone not named Jet or Hunter Lawrence really has to think about what's going to happen today. They've got to get to the front in the second moto and prove a point to these two because if these two build momentum and stretch out a points lead, good luck catching them. So if you're Justin Cooper, if you're RJ Hampshire, or anybody who fancies himself a championship contender, the time is now to send a message that you are for real. Yeah, absolutely, because Jason Thomas, we all knew that the hype was there for Jet Lawrence. A sensation both on and off the track is Jet Lawrence. Just one turn away, you can hear the celebratory rev. Chet Lawrence is a 2021 Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross champion. Yeah, I'm really excited coming into the uh, 2022 season with the with the number one plate. I mean, uh, that's we train for this and we want to get a get a title, obviously, and, and to uh, get to run the number one plate is awesome. I mean, I remember dreaming as a kid just want to run the number one plate because uh, not many people get to run it, so I'm. Uh, very excited, hopefully I can back it up. The fans being there has made it uh, just so much better of a Like that's what we race for. I mean, we race to race to put on a show, really. We love it. I mean, that's what I race for. I love to put on a show for you guys and obviously have interact with you guys, have fun because I just have as, as much fun as you guys are watching on a fun weekend. So, I mean, I, I think fans can never be too much. I mean, I, I wish we could have more and more and more so I get to meet more faces, new people, and uh, meet uh, people from like all over the country and out of, all over the world. Expectation would be the same as last year. Just come in, get good results, and just uh, keep being a 100% jet, don't uh, have any, try not to have any silly crashes and, and that stuff and just eliminate those mistakes and try and make it an even cleaner year. And he lived up to that billing in Moto1, taking that number one Honda to the number one spot. And right behind him was his brother Hunter. So we could be looking at a Lawrence brother battle for the overall win today, or is someone else going to be able to step up it was Justin Cooper doing that early in the moto, but he did not have the endurance to hold his old rival Jet off to the end. We'll see it as we reset it, re-rack it. Moto 2 coming your way on Map TV. Look 
50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. General Tire, anywhere is possible. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. Lawrence Brothers hanging out with their friends and fans earlier in the day. They got a little activation VIP area. We get merchandise and autographs. Then they got to get back to the busy business of actually racing for the day. The House of Lawrence. Yeah, good day, mates. That's a really cool thing. They innovated that last year at this track. And we'll see it throughout the campaign here for Lucas Oil Pro Motocross in 2022 as we get ready for the second and final 250 moto of the day. They'll give you the MX versus ATV Legends track map. Take us through what they got to deal with here. Once again, they got to make it through that 180 left and 180 right. Once they get through that, there's a whole lot of line changing. And even on this diagram, you can see those shiny spots. That's where it's getting hard and slick. So some of the riders might have switched to an intermediate versus more of a sand tire in their first moto. But Jeremy, a lot of jumps. So some guys are doing it, everything completely different. Well, like you said, the track's pre getting pretty slippery in some spots because it's kind of hardening up. Uh, these guys are going to have to watch the first few laps because, as you can see, there's some water, some prep between the motos. That's going to be a tricky part of the track. The first part of this race is going to be pretty slippery. It's hard to push when it's like that. Okay, so we've analyzed the track. Now let's take it into the tiniest detail with our KTM keys to the moto. Jeremy? Well, like I said, the track is hardening up. It's choppy. Uh, line choice is, is really imperative out there. These guys are going to have to get good starts. We know that. But they're going to have to maintain their, their downhill speed, their, their momentum. And uh, we saw some nice passes in Moto1. Uh, and I think the uh, trick to keeping your speed is keeping that momentum. So I think we're looking for that. With me, obviously, you got to get a good start, but it's managing these first two turns. Once you do the 180 left, you got to put yourself in position not to get to get chopped down or get caught in that 180 right. So we haven't seen really much. We saw a couple riders go down, but pretty much they were on their own. They got off to the track and got hooked up in the banners, but, but really no big pileups. But very, very tight first two turns. They survived that. They have a good shot at the checkered flag. So that's our KTM keys to the moto. We are ready to go racing here. 30 minutes and two laps. Oh, so Ty Masterpool uh, struggled in Moto1. He's coming back from injury. He's not going to race Moto2. So the alternate that makes it in is Jordan Jarvis, the female racer on the 301. She made a couple of these before. So she was next in line, and they will seed alternates into Moto2 if a rider pulls out of their gate position. So congrats to Jordan for getting in there. That's based on her finish in the LCQ last chance qualifier earlier today. Fly Racing 32nd card is up. And the mechanics move off. It's rider versus rider. 40 of them for 30 minutes and two laps. It's a Lawrence Brothers show. Will someone take the battle to them or will they battle each other? We're going to find out here as the revs come up. And the game goes down. Another great rush from one of the Yamahas on the inside. That's Nick Romano. No! Yes, he's going to hold it into the first turn. Just like you said, Rick Johnson, those first couple corners are tricky. That might be Noah Viney there, the young rider making his pro debut. He almost throws it away. Unbelievable. That is Ryan Hughes, Rhino's rider. Um, all Viney, his father, they bought my track up, up in Iwanga just right around the corner. But unbelievable. This is a young rider that was an amateur last year. Said we're going, jumping right into the pro ranks. We're not going to wait. We're not going to stand around and do the amateur deal. So, Jeremy, little, little, uh, he's throwing it, throwing it right in the fire right there. <laughs> well, so is he. This is Nick Romano. It's his pro debut as well for the rider out of New York City. And a bit of a struggle outside the top, top 10 in Moto 1, but much better here early in Moto 2. Let's see what the kid can do. Well, and now we see in second place the, the winner from the champion from last year, the champion from the East Coast Supercross, and first Moto winner, uh, Jet Lawrence, is now into second place. And he's got one of the uh, Pro Circuit Kawasaki riders Whoa. in third. I think that might be Hamaker. Oh, the inside is Lawrence. Well, Romano holds them off. You know, Jeremy made a good point that when they water these first couple laps, you got to watch because they're not grooming it and knocking, it, knocking, knocking the ruts down and stuff like that. So where it's hard and slick, when they put water on it, it becomes like glass. So these guys have to be careful the first couple laps. I think the one thing Nick has going for him, he is from New York. He's used to riding the slick dirt in the mud, in the weather. Uh, look, 
he's never led a national. He's going to be going for it right now, and we can see that uh, making a few little mistakes, but he's going hard just to stay <laughs> stay in the lead here. Yeah, this is a little more what we're used to. You see these uh, rookies or amateurs turning pro come in, and they usually are just all full of adrenaline and fire, at least in the early laps. It was a controlled ride for him just out of the top 10 in Moto 1, but he is absolutely sending it here early in Moto 2. And it's a little tricky. You do see some water thrown down on parts of the track. We've got dry stuff, we've got wet stuff, and stuff in between. Well, and we see the top five is Nicholas Romano, Jet Morris, Seth Hamaker, and Michael Moseman. So Moseman, and then actually in, rounding the top five is uh, Joe Schmoda. So Joe having a, a good, strong uh, finish after in the first moto, but he has to hang on to Jet Lawrence if he wants a shot at this. Yeah, he was coming from way too far back with Shimoda in moto one and ended up in fourth on RJ Hampshire. Let's see if Romano can settle down now as he heads off on lap two with Jet Lawrence right behind him. And looks like Jet's starting to close up. Going to put some pressure on that 4-1-1. Jet, all he has to do is just be real patient right here. He knows what to do. I, I know he's still young. Whoa. He's still young, but he has to be patient. He knows that Romano's not going to get too far away from him. And uh, again, I think he's just staying out of the mud. Track comes in. He's going to pour on the steam, get by these guys. But what a great start to the moto for Romano. Out there leading. What a good feeling. Well, and what I loved about what Jet Lawrence said in his podium speech is that there's some places where you can send it, use the berms and go, and there's other places where you're tippy-toeing around. And you can see Michael Moseman as he works his way into third place, who he's got to be concerned about him. But back to Jet Lawrence is that he's figuring out where can I tippy-toe and where can I send it. And, and to, re to reiterate what Jeremy said, this mud after the first couple laps with 40 riders running on it, it's going to become more of a racetrack as we see Jet Lawrence work oh, his way Oh, a big challenge of Romano there. Romano able to hold him off. Jet's got to go because, yes, Moseman is the man on the move on the 29. That's the red. Charlie Designs Red Bull. Gas Gas here is the inside line from Jet Lawrence, and he's able to put the Honda to the lead. You know what happens when you see a guy coming up on you like that? You're like, okay. No more being patient. Now, we probably just saw him waiting behind Romano, no problem. But then when Mosman started coming up, he's yeah. like, all right, well, I can't go. That plan has to go out the door. I got to go. So and that's what we just saw. We're on an alarming right, and I'm sure Mosman knows that. So now Romano's going to have to deal with Mosman. He doesn't want Jet Lawrence to get away. So we've got a battle on our hands for second. Another good run for Hamaker, who is in fourth. Then Shimoda, Hunter Lawrence is sixth. How quickly can Mosman get around Romano? Can he keep Jet Lawrence in sight? He said Romano was just outside the top 10, but that's 16th in Moto 1. Much improved here. It's kind of a surprise this week when his name popped up on the entry list, and he is going to race all 12 rounds. So his amateur career is over. He is now a full time pro, is Romano, and he's learning by the inch on this racetrack because guys like Mosman, they've been around a while. Seth Hamaker sitting right here behind Mosman. Uh, Shimoda getting a much better start, I think, than the last Moto. Uh, he's got a really keep the pace here in the the first few laps because we saw he had a strong ending of that first moto so if he can you know maybe hammaker is going to be a little more relaxed after he's got that one moto under his belt kind of i think like ricky said in the first moto got probably dealing with some arm pumps a little bit of nerves uh not being in that position much before that race uh now looks like he's riding pretty relaxed bozeman's going well so if he can just sit behind him sit on his fender maybe track's going to come in like we say and and uh, he'll be able to maintain that front speed. Yeah, Hamaker, your fastest qualifier today and that was a bit of a surprise. He's barely even raced motocross. It's only the fourth time he's raced one of these events. Had three starts in his career coming in. Missed a lot of time due to injury. He had been very good in Supercross at the time he had uh, raced there. He even got a win last year as a rookie. Multiple podiums this year. I didn't really know where he stood outdoors, but Jeremy, you had seen him at the track and you knew that the 47 had some real talent outdoors as well. Well, I've been watching Seth for a long time. He's been on the Team Green program for a long time. I've been watching him through some amateur races and I can, I, little sideways there, but uh, I just kind of could tell, man, he had some great corner speed, kid can ride. And uh, he's developed really well in Supercross. And uh, as we can see, he's doing, doing great out here. And Romano under fire again from Mosman, but holding strong on uh, that Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing machine. 
Ryder out of New York. And here comes Moseman, who's a Californian. And uh, Moseman is pretty bold, as he usually is. In our preseason press conference, he said the goal, five wins this year. And he's got to get to work right now, Romano, and he's doing it. But they both funnel to this inside. Well, and that's the thing. You know, my dad used to drill in my head. If you're following somebody, son, you can't pass them. So take a different line, because if they make a mistake and you fall down behind them, that's when... When I would have the big talk with my dad after a race, he, you know, he would say, you know, you got to go around. And now we like see Mosman looking to the outside, trying the outside, got a better run on uh, on Romano. And now he moves into second place. Yep, that's right. He rode where Romano wasn't and was able to put the gas gas into the number two spot. So Romano still holding strong in third at a hammock or Shimoda, Hunter Lawrence, Styles Robertson, Max Volan, Austin Fortner, and Nate Thrasher rounding out your top ten. 2.7 second lead for Jet Lawrence. This is an alarming situation for the rest of the field. If Jet Lawrence can just continue to cruise out front in these motos, then it's a long season. For riders like Mosman, they're just going to try to build their momentum as best they can. I'm going to show you what it's like to ride on this racetrack. The other Charlie Designs Red Bull Gas Gas rider, Pierce Brown. He had the GoPro camera on earlier today, so we'll give you our GoPro course preview. This uh, camera mounted behind the number plate. This is from our first moto. Wow, so tight in the first corner. I almost fall off my chair as I'm watching this. I'm leaning in. I'm all over the place. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so are they. Good stuff from GoPro. up front here with Jet Lawrence. 2.7 second lead over Mosman, and now we're seeing the track harden up, dust even in spots. So it's come a long way from what we saw this morning. Yeah, it was very deep. They, they did a great job. You know, you can't, with this many riders throwing dirt all over the place and the sun coming down and, and it's starting to get warmer outside, it, that's what motocross is, and that's what I loved about it. Because you, you're losing the front wheel, you're sliding, you're managing traction. It's not as groomed. I know, Jeremy, you were the king of Supercross, <laughs> and, and you're, you were also a national champion. But I had, by my choice, I loved the outdoors. If I had to pick a class, it was the 250 outdoors. You had to work the power. You could race the bike hard all day. And, you know, you weren't, you could charge the corners. On the 500, you had to be very, very ginger coming into the corners and tr try not to stall the bike. So I really, I really liked the 250. All right, the modern 250 here is the 250 four-stroke, and we've got a freight train to them right now. You've got Shimoda, Hunter Lawrence, and Hamaker. So they've gotten around Hamaker. But shout out to Romano, who's still leading this group. He has been tough. The rookie of the 4-1-1 in his first pro race. Shimoda and Hunter Lawrence, they're pretty good friends off the track. I don't know if they're friends right now because they are duking it out the 30 and the 96. Shimoda finally making a move. He kind of sat there for a while. Looked like he was, you know, in my opinion, probably didn't make a move early enough. But now he's right in the hornet's nest with these guys. Got to make, make a pass by Romano. So because Hunter is coming right behind him. So if, if he wants a shot at that second overall, he's got to get by Romano and hold down uh, that second place. All right, well, he's got to catch most. Stasic is committed to developing the next generation of riders like eight year old Cooper Langdon of Encinitas, California, the all new Stasic 18 E-Drive allows kids the ability to rip in places close to home that wouldn't be accessible to conventional motorcycles. If you want to be in a future broadcast, scan the QR code you see on the screen and submit your video entry. The Stasic generation is made up of little rippers, just like Cooper. Now that's the machine where you learn to develop riding habits like this. Jet Lawrence showing how it's done getting away here 3.8 second lead over the rest of the field and it's changing in a hurry behind him Joe Shimoda has now gotten around the 411 of Romano Hunter Lawrence trying to get him as well he's down to the inside I don't know if there's room there he's gonna try to make room Ah, oh, Romano able to hold him at bay side by side we go again now Hunter's gonna be on the inside for this next corner after the finish line jump seen some passes through here how about the fight for Romano he gave it everything he had 
Hunter's able to overhaul it. Well, and, but I, what I love about Romano is that he's not giving up. He's not just like, oh, well, they're, they're faster than me. Oh, well, they're pros or whatever. No, this kid is a gamer. He's fighting. He's been going, working back and forth with these guys, and now he has to deal with Joe Schmone. Or actually, is that Hamaker? Hamaker, yeah. They've all gotten around Hamaker. It flipped. Hamaker was at the, or at the front of this group at one point. He got passed by Shimoda and Hunter Lawrence. He's trying to go after Romano. And next in the order would be Max Volan, who definitely needs a shot in the arm of confidence. And it looks like he's starting to build a good performance here. Hamaker so tries to get uh, Romano. Go ahead. I think one of the important things for Romano is to not, you know, try to mess with these guys. Like you said, he can get right behind them, sort of learn some pace. You know, he hasn't been in this position with these fast guys much. So it's important to not play games. Maybe just stay clear, ride your own line, get behind the guy, try to find his pace, and learn at the same time. Well, and what he's learning, he, he doesn't even know. Yeah. You know what I mean, he's just absorbing it and, and through osmosis, being with these guys and watching what they're doing and feeling their speed. And I remember because when I would, when I first turned pro, it's like if I could hang on to him for one lap, maybe two laps, and then that, then that's what's funny. That's what uh, uh, um, Ryan Dungey's mechanic was telling him before the race. Try to leave for one lap, then maybe two, then maybe three. Next thing you know, the checkered flag comes around. But for Romano right now, he has to learn from these guys because he is going to be definitely be a contender next year. Yeah, that's what Star Racing and this Monster Yamaha squad are looking for because Justin Cooper is expected to graduate to the 450s next year. Christian Craig, one of their 250 riders, will be moving to the 450 class full-time uh, next year as well. I believe Colt Nichols, who's out injured for that team, is also bound for the 450 class. So they're in a rebuild stage, and they move Romano up into the pro ranks a little early, and he's learning quickly and impressing as well. We'll show you how Romano ended up up front. We'll give you the motosport.com whole shot replay as Hamaker and Romano continue to battle it out for what would be the fifth place spot. Here's that motosport.com whole shot replay. Romano up the inside. See Romano up the inside. He's able to hold on to it. But Noah Viney, you yeah. got to give it to this little kid. He oh. sends it around the first turn, but then loses a little bit off the second turn. And as you watch him on the inside, not taking anything away from, from Romano, <laughs> <laughs> Noah Viney all over the track. La life comes at you quick when you make Whoa. your pro debut there for Noah Viney. <laughs> and Romano takes the motosport.com whole shot. I mean, Viney was on a super mini, a uh, smaller two-stroke bike a year ago at this time. So it has been a big transition for him as Hamaker and Romano continue Whoa. to battle and Romano keeps fighting. Yeah, and, and, and once again, that's what I love about Romano. He's not giving up. And Hamaker, it's great to see him come back. We were, obviously something, arm pump or something, that first moto. But now he seems like he's getting, being able to run his pace the whole time as him and Romano go back and forth. And behind them, you've got uh, Forkner who has gotten around Voland. So that would be seventh place next in line. Then it's Voland, Robertson, Thrasher in the top 10, Pierce Brown 11th, Kitchen is 12th. Ooh, Justin Cooper, you point that out, MC is back in 14th place. Yeah, not looking good. Well, Hampshire, no. Hampshire in 13 and Cooper in 14th, so that is not something that we expected to see. Yeah, Hampshire podium in Moto 1, 13th right now. And we were afraid that Justin Cooper might not have the fitness for losing a lot of time with an injury. Might be the case here. We're halfway through this Moto, 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. You can save 15% or more on your insurance with GEICO. Just give them a call or head to the website. Man, I've seen about four or five times where I thought Hamaker had this pass for sure. Romano just won't let it happen. Well, one of the things we expected to see up front was a Yamaha on the start, and we thought it'd be Justin Cooper, yeah. ex except for it was his rookie teammate, Nicholas Romano, who's holding off Seth Hamaker right here and doing a great job of not letting him by. Hamaker is getting stuck in his pace and losing time to and again. Hunter Lawrence, who, who's in front of him. Yeah, this is uh, one of those things you should know, but you got to you got to kind of look past your competition and go where they're not. I can't agree with you more, Jeremy. The, the, he keeps following them too much, and he just keeps telegraphing his movement, trying to go to the inside to pressure Romano to, to kind of move out of the way, and Romano's not having it. I mean, he's he's been banging bars with the best, the right in front of him, and then now we finally see Hamaker look to the outside, but that's what he has to do. He has to try in a different way around him than just looking up the inside because Romano is too solid. And he goes back to the inside again, almost throws it away trying to get there. Is Hamaker. We've seen some passes in this corner, but Romano just keeps working inside to inside. Gonna make Hamaker run the long way around. Will it work? 
This time Whoa. he gets it. A little bit of a collision there. Romano almost high-sided. So finally locking it down is Hamaker, but remember at one point he was there with Shimoda and Lawrence. He is not close now. Credit to the rookie Romano showing some real fight to hold on to that position as long as he could. Up front, Jet Lawrence is up by seven and a half seconds on Michael Moseman as he's looking to take that number one machine to a 1-1 performance. Can he keep the undefeated streak here at Fox Raceway alive? So far, so good with three quarters of the race day done for Jet Lawrence. Checking back in on this battle. Looks like Hunter Lawrence is ready to hook it back up again with Shimoda. They were fighting earlier in this moto, and they want to duke it out again. This would be for second. And Hunter trying to make it a 1-2 for the Lawrence brothers for the second time today. And Shimoda looking for an overall podium and looking to improve his point score by holding on to this second place spot. Oh, it's Moseman in second, actually, still up ahead. Uh, don't mind the... Uh, Pylon there on the left side of the screen showing Moseman in fourth. I believe he still is in that number two spot. Shimoda riding really well today. Didn't get to see it early in uh, Moto 1. Had to come through traffic, but he's very strong in the latter laps. And actually stretching it just a little bit over Lawrence. Well, no, I think that is Moseman back there. Yeah, they have made the move on Moseman. So they are second and third. And Moseman has drifted back to the number four spot. Not sure what happened to Moseman there. So this is indeed the battle for the number two spot. Well, and, and what I love is that Sh I love that Shimoda is strong later in the moto, and he's got to keep that momentum going because right now that's what he's looking for, trying to get that get back on that podium. Jeremy McGrath is the unquestioned king of Supercross. Seven titles and 72 wins, both records, will earn you a royal nickname. But McGrath became much more than just a stadium racing specialist, and he proved that in 1995. The Honda Star captured seven of the 12 overall race wins and would handily outduel Yamaha's Jeff Emig by 60 points to win that year's 250 National Motocross title. In 1996, McGrath started the season with six straight moto wins, while also winning the first 13 Supercross races in a row. All told, McGrath started 96, winning all but one race over a five-month span. McGrath would also answer his country's call by competing on a winning Team USA at the Motocross of Nations in both 1993 and 1996. Jeremy would finish his racing career with 89 combined wins in Supercross and Motocross and eight AMA National Championships and he continued to scratch his itch for competition by competing in stock cars and becoming a champion in off-road truck racing. He's still involved with the sport today as the host of the Science of Supercross feature seen each week on the Monster Energy Supercross television broadcast. These days, the king of Supercross is also a family man with an adoring wife and two children. And our profiles brought to you by MX Vertis ATV Legends. And you always say, I know the Supercross thing is what you're known for, but the sense of accomplishment of getting that motocross title means a lot. Yeah, you know, some of my favorite victories were outdoors. I mean, yeah. because I've always said they were just so hard. And, and, and that, that year in 96 at Motocross of Nations was something I'll cherish for the rest of my life. I mean, we had some serious camaraderie that day. We were arguably one of the best teams with, you know, those guys back in, <laughs> in 86. You know, the, comparable to those guys was, was pretty good in my book. And we had a great day that day. And, uh, man, just a celebration of the country and USA and, and uh, proud to be part of that, proud to be part of this great industry and have such a long, long, fun career and still be working. So stoked to be here with you guys. Colin Race is still a huge fan and I ride my dirt bike a ton. So uh, excited to, you know, like I, I said, excited to call these races and watch these kids shred this track. Yeah, that's what's always impressed me. You never put the dirt bikes down, but like you still love to ride. 
Yeah, you know, it's weird. I, I, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I always promised myself that I would kind of retire before I hated it. We see a lot of guys when they're done, they're just so fried and they're tired of it. Uh, you know, I still love my dirt bike. It's created a life that I never imagined I would have uh, for a lot of us. And I'm, like I said, I'm proud to be part of that. But I still just love I mean, watching these guys just take it to the next level and seeing these kids have so much fun. And it, it just brings back flashbacks from when I was a kid. So uh, again, just a great industry, so healthy, love the fitness part of it, and uh, just love riding my dirt bike. And we move on to the next generation of talent, Jet Lawrence, last year's 250 national champion, and making an early claim for this year's title, looking for the 1-1 sweep in the first race of the year here at Fox Raceway. We can drift back to second place, should be Joe Shimoda. There he is on the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki there in second. But every time you see Shimoda, you see Hunter Lawrence. Hunter Lawrence, a little mistake there in that corner, but Ricky Johnson, he's not giving up on this battle. No, Joe Shimoda, what Joe Shimoda is, is a gamer and when we what we saw is first hunter made a charge on him got close to him they had to work their way around some of the different track traffic you know with romano and that and hammaker but shimoda is actually pulling away from hunter Lawrence, not by a lot but a tenth of a second every like some kind of every other turn so now he's about two seconds down on him they both got around michael moseman who went from second back to fourth seth hammaker is fifth austin forkner six, sixth nick romano the rookie making his pro debut seventh Max Volan, Styles Robertson, and Pierce Brown rounding out the top 10. And every time you think this thing is over, Hunter Lawrence gets back in the picture on Shimoda. This could go down to the last lap. Everything we've seen from Hunter Lawrence, there's no give up in this guy. Mm -hmm. There's no quit. He's going to run Joe Shimoda all the way to the finish line. <laughs> you can bet on that. So Shimoda's going to have to be ready. And this is not a test of, it's not only a test of fitness, but it's also a mental test. This is a lot of pressure when you have someone riding on your butt like that for that amount of time and having to hit yourself 100% all the time. This is going to be a tough last six minutes for him. And uh, I always like to be the follower. It's a little harder yeah. to be the leader. So Hunter's in a little bit better position here, but Shimoda's going to try to hold him off. Well, and as we talked before is the lines on the track but everything is starting to get so seasoned that, that they're they're they know their lines they know where they want to go the insides are developed the outsides are developed but there are certain ways to pass to position yourself so right now hunter lawrence has to not take every chance he's got but to set the pass up and then make sure he anchors it and controls shimoda if he's going to get by him and maintain that spot Ken Honda pull off the one, two again. They are one, three so far in this moto, but Hunter's getting closer. We'll send it down to Jason Thomas, who's with the Honda team manager, JT. I'm down here with Lars Lindstrom. I don't know how you can draw it up much better than this. Your rider, Hunter Lawrence, is still in the midst of a battle right now, but what a day so far. Yeah, what a day, pretty incredible. Um, can't, you know, expect them to do any better than they're doing. I think Hunter, you know, he's really strong at the end of the race, so I do expect him to, to pressure Joe and possibly get that second spot. Um, we don't need it for the overall, but it would be nice. So um, right now, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. All right, so Honda celebrating their 50th anniversary of racing in America, along with the 50th anniversary of this series, and looking to do it in banner fashion. Can they go one, two again here in this second moto? It's up to Joe Shimoda to try to spoil that party, and you know he would love to do it. A little bit of a struggle in Supercross this year from Shimoda, who is really making strides in 2021. Not the Supercross campaign he wanted in 22. He has hit the reset button big time here for Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Looked good in Moto 1, even better here in Moto 2. But again, Hunter Lawrence just won't give up. All right, we're going to take one more break as we close in on the finale of this second 250 moto. Those are your event points. We total both motos together. It's a Lawrence Brothers 1-2 overall. Can they finish both motos in those positions? This is fun to watch. You can just sense how badly these guys want it, even though it's late in the moto. I mean, Hunter keeps throwing it at Joe, but Joe's riding hard. Well, we have three. We got three and a half minutes left before we get the two lap, two laps to go. So we have, we still have some racing, but 
what I love is that they're not rolling over. Yep. You know, a lot of times, Ooh. oops, you see Hunter Lawrence off to the side there, but you'll see a lot of times where if someone gets past, they're giving up. We're seeing this this new generation where they're where a lot of them are fighting their way back. So um, uh, Joe Shimoda is definitely one of those kids that is that has no quit in them. Yeah, and Joe is known really for his consistency. A lot of the young kids come into the sport, and they're known for that flash and sizzle. He was a little more of a, by the end of the moto, you look and you're like, oh, didn't even see that. A good moto from Shimoda. Uh, now we're starting to see a little more of that flash and sizzle, and, and maybe the starts are part of that. Yeah, well, I think you're, you know, he's fine in his speed. I, I don't think it's something you want to be known for is, hey, your consistency, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, what you'd rather be known for is your speed and then find the consistency. However, he's doing a great job of finding the speed after being very consistent. Yeah. You know, he's uh, putting the work in. You can tell he's got two and a half minutes here to survive this battle with Hunter Lawrence, who we know is strong and uh, looking to try to go one two with his brother. But uh, Shimoda's doing an awesome job. And just like that, he shed a little pressure again from Hunter. Let's see if this one goes down to the wire. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Imagine sprint cars on a quarter mile track for 500 laps. And oh, let's throw in a three wide start and some pit stops to boot. That's what you get with the Lucas Oil Little 500. Catch all the action at 9 a.m. tomorrow only on MAV TV. We are back here, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross from California, opening round of the season, and it has been the Jet Lawrence show. And what a show he's putting on, even with a 9.7 second lead. It is fun to watch that style and speed league just carry through that corner. Your defending champ looking better than ever so far today. In that promo, we got to see Cameron McAdoo, unfortunately, went down hard in the first yeah. moto, not out here for the second moto. We do not have a report on that, but Cameron McAdoo was going, getting hauled off with a little bit of blood out of the nose and the mouth, so tough day. But I, I hope it well. Yeah, yeah, tough break for uh, McAdoo. Got hurt at this track last year. Hopefully he can bounce back pretty quickly. And Jet Lawrence with it completely under control here. Now we're just playing the clock game. Will he get to the finish? before or after that countdown clock expires. It's going to be two laps to go or three, depending. There is Shimoda in second. Shimoda's keeping Jet honest because he has to keep pushing because Hunter Lawrence is relentless with this pressure from third. Well, here's one of the things that, that Hunter has going for him. He already knows that he doesn't have to pass Shimoda to get second overall, right? Mm -hmm. But Shimoda just wants to stand for something. You know, he's like, man, I had some good speed at the end of the first moto. This moto, I'm running second. I do not want to get past. And uh, he's showing some, some good stamina and some good willpower here at the end of the moto. Uh, we all know Hunter Lawrence has a lot of fight in him, but it's winding down here. So if he's going to do something, he's got to do it now. Well, but it also, what, what Hunter needs to think about for the championship, he's going to lose another two points. So he'll be down eight points after the first round. Um, and that, that's a chunk. That, that's a chunk of change that you do not want to give that up. So every bit counts the, the two points at the last round count the same as the two points at the first round. So he's definitely not going to give up and, and settle in for the overall because it really means nothing at this point. Um, he needs to go for those points. It was also good. Uh, these guys are really good friends off the track. They grew up the Lawrence brothers and Shimoda as development riders with the old Geico Honda team. So they raced together as amateurs, especially Jet and Joe. Hunter's a little older, turned pro earlier. But these guys really get along well off of the racetrack. But you can see they put that down as soon as they put the helmets on. Hunter Lawrence is for about the 10th time giving it a charge here. And this is the first time we've seen Joe Shimoda look back. So so yeah, Jeremy was pointing that on the first moto. If you're looking back, you're not thinking about going forward. So <laughs> right now he's got Hunter Lawrence hot on his tail. And it is going to be two laps to go here at Fox Raceway. So only about what would now be about a lap and a half for Hunter on that 96 to try to take second place away. They pulled away a bit from Moseman, who's fourth. Seth Hamaker, this moto holding pretty strong in the top five. Then it's Forkner, Brown, Levi Kitchen, Max Bolin, and R.J. Hampshire rounding out the top 10. Hampshire was third in Moto 1, so not what he wanted here in Moto 2. 
So about as close as they have been. Well, Jeremy, Jeremy talked about you got to man up in this and outdoor motocross. You hurt. And right now, Joe Shimoda has worked so hard and he thought that he had Hunter pretty much covered. Now he looks back and he's rotting on his tail. So imagine being completely anaerobic, tired as can be. Now you have to put in your two hardest laps to keep this little Aussie off your tail. <laughs> you are barely able to hold on to the handlebars at the end of this race and you have to put in your fastest laps. We know Hunter Lawrence will not give up. That's one of his strong points. At the end of these races, he's been nothing but spectacular. He makes a lot of passes within the last couple minutes. We've seen it in Supercross a lot, and Shimoda's going to be put to the test for sure. White flag now. One more lap as Chet Lawrence is on a cruise mode now, looking for the 1-1 and his fourth consecutive win at this racetrack. Take a hand off the bar. Did he just give him like, hey, okay, thanks for moving over for me? Uh, maybe. <laughs> wow. You got bad. time to think about stuff right now. Well, bad place for a one-hander. Okay. Yeah, that was exactly. freestyle back at the <laughs> early <se> late 70s. <laughs> Shimoda versus Hunter Lawrence again. We'll update you on this battle. No surprise, Hunter is still there, but he's running out of time. But he's looking around. He's looking around, trying different lines. I like what I like what I see out of Hunter Lawrence. I think we're going to definitely see him go for a pass. But he's got to set it up. He can't just take the first run at it because we've seen that happen with uh, Jason Anderson trying to pay, make the pass too soon, and then that messed him up. So right now he's got to make the move, Jeremy. Yeah, and here's what he's doing. He is get, trying to get close enough to get Joe into protection mode, right? So as soon as Joe gets kind of off his game a little bit and starts trying to protect the insides, he's going to be able to use one of those outside lines as a momentum line and get some speed and maybe make this pass. Oh, well, this could be exactly it right here. As we see Jet Lawrence up front, about a half a lap away from victory. And there it is. He's trying that speed line. Hunter versus Joe to the inside. They're side by side. OK, these lappers might come into play here. Actually, it worked to Shimoda's advantage there. Looked like it was an attack coming from Hunter. Wasn't able to make it happen. Half a lap to go. Got to clear another set of lap riders. <laughs> Man, you got a whole bunch of moving chicanes out there. Yeah, what everything. does he do now? What does he do now? The guy's going to take his line. What does he do now? Hunter's going to grease this outside and try to get a run on the downhill. Side by side. He, he makes the move. It. Last lap pass. Hunter Lawrence to second. Woo, he earned that one. Well, that's where you got to use the, the lappers as a pick, and Hunter did a great job. Shimoda looked to the inside, got held up a little bit on the entry, and that's where Hunter just said, I'm going to run the outside, carry momentum, and it worked out for him. Great job for Hunter Lawrence. Oh, and you can see Joe is giving it everything he has to try to respond here with only a few corners to go. Meanwhile, Chet Lawrence has been in control all day long until right there. <laughs> that was not celebratory moves. That was a mistake. He's got to deal with lappers, but no trouble at all. Hunter Lawrence, 1-1 one, one sweep of round one. Jet. Jet, oh, Lawrence. Jet Lawrence, how about that? We called Hunter so many too, darn times. We got too many Lawrences. Yeah, 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 we called Hunter too many times there. Jet Lawrence takes the victory with the 1-1 one, one sweep, and we wait on that battle for second. It looks like Hunter is going to get it. There it is. Oh, wow, what a race, what a race. Yeah, yeah, Shimoda and Hunter Lawrence leaving it all out there on the racetrack. There's the great Johnny O'Mara. Former champion of this class back when it was called the 125 for two strokes. He is now the coach and trainer for both of the Lawrence brothers. He's another one of the legends here in this sport. And old uh, Lars Lindstrom there, the team manager. His dad used to be the team manager yep. of uh, the Honda team, Gunnar Lindstrom, back in the day. So there is a lot of history baked into this performance by the Lawrence brothers with Jet sweeping the motos. And Hunter ending up second in both motos as well. So it is a one-two all around uh, for the team. Shimoda will finish up in third. Mosman solid in fourth, Hamaker fifth. That's a good solid bounce back for Hamaker after a fade in moto one. Forkner sixth, Brown Kitchen, Hampshire had a rough one, able to rally back to ninth to score some points. Max Volan was 10, Styles Robertson and Nate Thrasher rounding out the top 12. All right, all in control for Hunter Lawrence here at Fox Raceway, but it is just a start. You know the first thing they're going to be reminding him it is a long season, but so far the defending champ getting it done.
The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. Well, last night, Honda celebrated 50 years of racing. There's the old team manager, Dave Arnold. Rick Johnson, you were there. Uh, there you are on the left, unveiling the 2023 motorcycle, and it has been a perfect weekend at the races for them as well so far. Right now, it has been a Honda weekend with 1-2, one, 1-2 two, one, two in the 250, and also 1-2 in the 450, but we have more racing to go. So I think there's a Jason Anderson and a couple other people that do not want to see this sweep. Yep, that'll be 450 Moto2 coming up at the top of the hour, but let's review this 250 Moto2 with a Lucas Oil race recap. Nick Romano down to the inside. There it is. See those red boots? Going to just knife inside of young Noah Viney here to grab the motorsport.com hole shot. So two rookies up front early, but the now very experienced 18-year-old Jet Lawrence is in third. Viney makes a mistake. Lawrence up to second, and then Lawrence will put the attack on Romano, Jeremy. Lawrence taking his time in the beginning. The track was a little wet. Right here, you see him making a pass up the inside. Nice, smart pass. Once he gets the lead, extends that gap, has a nice moto, cruises. And the entire race was a battle between Hunter Lawrence on the 96 and Joe Shimoda on the 30. First, they were third and fourth. They moved to second and third on the last lap. Hunter makes the move. The last lap, Hunter comes up, sweeps the outside. As you see, that puts him on the inside on the downhill. So Hunter put himself into second place, but it was him, Jet Lawrence, all the way to the finish. Another Lawrence Brothers 1-2, and the number one is 1-1 one, one at round one here at Fox Raceway. He's raced here four times at this track. He's won the overall all four times. Keep saying it's not his favorite track. It's going to be harder and harder to make that argument when you keep putting the big trophies on the shelf. Shimoda ends up third of the moto. I believe that'll be third overall as well, just out of the top 10 in this moto. Romano drifted back to 14th. Justin Cooper, 13th. That's not what the Star Racing Yamaha team was hoping for. But he did come in off after injury, and you cannot fake it here in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. The fitness is a little off. It is going to show unfortunate for him. Jet Lawrence, meanwhile, he's fit, he's strong. He's down to the podium with Jason Thomas. Jet Lawrence undefeated here. That's four in a row. You're making it look too easy. I think I sweated more than you did during that moto. Pretty impressive. Yeah, no, uh, that uh, that HRC Honda bike's hooking up out of the gate. It's uh, giving me a, a lot better opportunity here. And yeah, four four times undefeated here. It's, it's a good feeling, even though it's not one of my favorite tracks. But um, no, it's it's awesome. I get my little uh, uh, the Jetson yep. Honda section. I can hear them every lap. Uh, thanks for everyone that stopped by and uh, bought a donut on that stuff. The fans were awesome here. Congrats to, to HJ also. I was riding and kind of looking back just because I could see him now. I'm like, oh, did he get him? Did he get him? So I was like trying to race and see where Hunter was. So it was uh, it was a fun, uh, good one. And it's, uh, I'm pumped for Hunter to go one to it when we're almost like we're having a little competition with the 450 guys. So good luck to Chase and Kenny. Hopefully they can do the same as first uh, Moto One. So yeah, no, thanks to the crowd. You guys were awesome. Yeah, they got the Lawrence Brothers cheering section here, and they gave them plenty to cheer for. When you look at the Geico overall results, there it is. The 1-2 for the Honda Riders. Shimoda ends up in third. And RJ Hampshire, by salvaging ninth in that second moto, does end up fourth overall. And you see the right side of the screen. Those are championship points paid out based on those uh, moto finishes. All right, we'll send it back down to the podium again with JT. Hunter Lawrence, you held up your end of the deal. You get the sweep with your brother. Hard fought, though. You had to pass Joe Shimoda at the end there, but it's tough moto all the way around. Yeah, it was. It was tough. It's a really tough track to uh, to pass on, you know. It's pretty one line, but uh, not happy. Great way to start the season, and uh, can't thank the team enough. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Everyone in the Lawrence hospitality will come over after the race, say what's up, and uh, thanks, everyone, for the support. It was awesome. Thanks. All right, Hunter Lawrence getting it done down the stretch with about a half a lap to go to rip that second place spot away from Joe Shimoda. Yeah, and the fans got a lot to look forward to. No matter where you live, there is a Lucas Oil Pro Motocross race you can make it to. It'll be in Northern California next weekend, then Thunder Valley in Colorado for round three. High Point, Pennsylvania, Redbud in Michigan, Southwick in Massachusetts, Spring Creek in Minnesota, Washougal, Washington, Washington State, Unadilla in New York, Buds Creek, Maryland, Iron Man Raceway is outside of Indianapolis, Indiana. We'll be right back here for our finale, Fox Raceway, about an hour outside of San Diego, California. That is your upcoming schedule brought to you by Honda. 
And we'll send it back down to uh, Jason Thomas here in just a moment as we uh, get a few more stories from this 250 Moto number two. Here's JT. Joe Shimoda, great ride there. Battle Hunter warns the entire moto. I'm sure it was frustrating to give it away there at the end, but still, what a great way to start the season. Uh, for sure, uh, the Supercross season was a struggle, and uh, I've been working hard for this, and I feel like uh, it's in the, we're going the right direction, so uh, hopefully I can do another one next week, and uh, let's have a fun summer. All right, there it is. Joe Shimoda definitely happy after how the Supercross season went for him. Some rough finishes and some injuries, and then starts this year up on the podium. That's where he wants to be. Now, we're not done. We will have 450 Moto2 at the top of the next hour, so stay with us on MAV TV. And also, our new post race show, Inside Pro Motocross, airing every Tuesday at 6 30 p.m. of additional scoops and information from Jason Thomas, Jeremy McGrath, Rick Johnson, and myself, Jason Wygant. So, and some two-wheeled action every Tuesday, the Pulp MX show on MAV TV as well. So we're here all week long on MAV TV talking motocross. What a great way to start it off, especially for Honda, especially for the Lawrence brothers. But it was fun to watch, absolutely. Well, you got to give respect where respect's due. And, and both the Lawrence brothers look great uh, physically, emotionally, and on the bikes. Uh, also, Honda got those bikes very, very rideable. This was a tricky track. You know, I wanted to have Jeremy talk about that. It was it was sketchy, slick. Had a lot of traction at the beginning. Got got more sketchy as the day went on. But you got to give it to the two Lawrence brothers. Hey, there's no denying the success those guys had today. They rode hard. Uh, man, Jet was something else for sure. Hunter uh, really coming through in the end there to get one two at the second moto. Uh, we saw some Ricky, some some rookies run up front, yep. uh, which is going to give them a lot of valuable experience. You know, Hammaker was up front. We saw uh, who else was it? Uh, uh, Cooper, Cooper was up front yeah. in the yep. first moto. Second moto, we had Romano leading the race. Uh, you know, a lot of valuable experience for those guys. So uh, veterans finished up top. Shimoda did a great job. Congrats to these guys. Yeah, that's 250 is always considered the development class. Shimoda, Lawrence, and Lawrence aren't old by any means, but they've been here a little while. Good for guys like Hamaker and Romano to learn today. We'll be right back, though. It is 450 class moto number two coming your way as we wrap our 250 division. Thanks to you folks for watching. Awesome to hang out with Jeremy McGrath and Rick Johnson. Jason Thomas, excellent job on the racetrack as we wrap our 250 division. 450 Moto2 coming your way right after that. So don't go anywhere on MAV TV. We'll see if Chase Sexton can follow his teammate, Jet Lawrence, to victory lane. Send congrats out to our winner here, the Jet on fire today.